Who's here, boys? Definitely Bane. Hey, shyster. Welcome to hell. What happened? Your lawyer screw you? <laughs> Not even Jesus can save you, lawyer. Nothing makes people happier than a lawyer going to prison. And who could blame them? Lawyers represent the victory of reason over righteousness. It's very easy to lose faith in a system where the strong tread on the weak. Trust me, I know. It started on Fat Tuesday. I was having a bad night. Had just been introduced to my conscience. First impression, I can't say that I liked him very well. The bastard wouldn't go away. I was trained in the law. One of the first things they teach you is that morality is a private and costly luxury. My father used to say that jurisprudence wasn't equivocal as long as you kept in mind that truth is the highest law. Judge Bannon, please. Lawson Russell. Tell him it's urgent. Better be good, Lawson. I'm less than a dance away from getting my dick sucked. Sir, I have a problem. I'm going to recuse myself from the case. Are you drunk? Cold, sober. Have you informed your client? Yes. And his reaction was? He was unhappy. I should think he would be. Do you know how this will look to the jury? Got the case won, for Christ's sake. You're out of your fucking mind. Do you know that? Now, this is a monumental mistake you're making here, son. I cannot successfully serve the needs of my client at this time. It is my duty to withdraw. I'll have the paperwork on your desk at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. And I'll be in a 10 to rip it up. I'll see you in my chambers then. Judge. 
bitch. Your lawyer is losing it, Thurman. Why didn't you call me? Hmm? It was a monumental mistake. Professional suicide. My client was Thurman Parks III. I grew up with Thurman. His daddy was a former mayor of New Orleans and one nasty son of a Catahoula cur. But Thurman was even meaner. He was on trial for the brutal rape and murder of a lap dancer from Lafayette. She died of asphyxiation, her panties stuffed down her throat. I love juries. They're all the same. They think they've come to judge guilt and innocence. But in the end, they vote for whichever side has the better lawyer. So I hammered them. I made them look at that photo until it was meaningless. It was working. Damn, you are good, boy. You looked over the questions I'm going to ask you tomorrow? I have them memorized. We're going to win, aren't we? Uh, you bet your ass we are. <laughs> I told that bitch I would walk. That reporter. You know the one. Yeah, I know the one. I guess I always knew Thurman was guilty, but we train ourselves not to think about that. We're supposed to be impartial, unaffected, passionless. I didn't know it at the time, but that sudden act of conscience had saved my life. Apparently, violated what you mean, you violated ethics? the code. Anything unethical is your whole argument. An you know nothing about this Shut the fuck evidence, up, the both of you. Wiley, he obviously knows that this bastard is guilty. Now, I want to know if there's been suppression of evidence. You know, you may have been a great quarterback, Billy Ray, and very popular with all the girls, but let me give you a little piece of advice. You do not want to cross swords with me, do you? No, Judge. Leave us. Don't get religion on me now, Lawson. We're too far down the road. Now, you fuck this up between Thurman Jr. and me, you won't have a future in this state. Now, I'll fix it so that you never practice the law again. And you know I can do that, don't you? Now you get back in there and you finish this case. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. You will just afford to pass on this ninth session. All rise. With Honorable Wally Bannon. I had represented a lot of rotten people in my career. Gotten them off and never given it a second thought. It's the system. Innocent until proven guilty. And if you have enough money, proof is mighty hard to come by. Mr. Russell, are you ready to continue? You have to be rich to get away with murder. And Thurman was filthy rich. Mr. Russell, are you ready to continue? I'd like to say I answered to that higher law. The truth of the matter is, he never should have smiled. Mr. Russell, are you ready? Yes, sir. I am. The defense calls Thurman Parks the third. Who 
You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. <clears throat> Thurman, tell the court where you were on the night of June 17th. I was in the Silver Garda Dance Club. Where you met and had drinks with Jeannie Broussard. A drink. A drink. What you talk about? No, this isn't one of the questions that we prepared. Tell the jury what you talked about. Tell the jury what you talked about. <clears throat> we talked about football. <laughs> Football. Was that before or after she danced naked on your lap? Mr. Russell, approach the bench. Was that before or after you drove her down to the batcher and dragged her up onto the levee? That's enough, Mr. Russell. You are out of order. Was that before or after you stripped her, sodomized her, strangled her? You are in contempt, sir. Bailiff! Huh? Bailiff! Remove Mr. Russell from this courtroom! One-sided conversation, what with her panties being stuffed down her throat. Remove him from this courtroom! Escort him out of my courtroom and detain him for custody! The jury will disregard the outrageous outburst of defense counsel. It was declared a mistrial, and I was fired by Thurman Parks III. I never could stand him anyway. The bad news was the disbarment hearing. They threw the book at me. Felt like the guy who went into the hospital to have his leg amputated and had the good leg cut off by mistake. Then, of course, they had to cut off the bad leg. Court ruled in favor of the doctor. It seemed I didn't have a leg to stand on. It is the judgment of the Louisiana Supreme Court that as of this date, Lawson Russell Esquire be disbarred from the practice of law for life. I made a mistake. Should have hired one of those good old boys down at the country club. None of them would represent you. Right. Lawson, do you know what the odds are that a woman would be raped or molested in this country? One in 12. How about a man who kills a woman actually appearing in a courtroom? One in three. I should be proud of myself. Is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. He's going to be retried, Pope, and he's not going to be convicted. Yep, I wrecked my career for nothing. No, not for nothing. You stood up for a basic moral principle to protect the innocent and punish the guilty. Your daddy would have been proud. Of what? I broke the law. Disregarded my sworn duty. Ruined my life. Your life's not over. They took your license, not your balls. There's so many things you could do. <laughs> I hear they're hiring at the Win Dixie. <laughs> now, come on, listen, I'm serious. I'm serious. So, what are your plans? Are you going to sit up in here and stoop? I'm going to go down to Key West. Father kept the house there. Hell, I might even write a novel. I'm as smart as John Grisham. Lawson. Is there anything I can do? You can hop up on the desk for me. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You know, if only you ask nicely. You don't know what you're missing. I mean, I'm the best. <laughs> Pride goes before destruction. 
and the Holy Spirit before I fall. Too late. I'm already fallen. That's why it's so sad. You haven't fallen at all. been in the Florida Keys for almost 13 months. as nickel and diming as a fishing guy, mostly to take up the time and avoid writing my book. But business was slow. Mr. Russell. Hello. Hello. My name is Marlo. I spoke to you on the telephone earlier. That's right. That's right. Hello, Mr. Marlowe. Hello. So you're interested in fishing? That's why I'm here. Great. Come on aboard. Mr. Marlowe, this must be the place. Yeah. It's quite lovely. How long we got you in Key West there, sir? Oh, permanently. I've just moved here. I only recently retired from teaching. See, my wife passed on. We don't have any children, and this place has always held my fancy. The old man in the sea and all that. Well, here's your pole, sir. All right. Down like that. All right, now we're going to float on the tide right into those flats so you can just cast out this way and let the bait just drift right on in there. All right. Oh, hello! <laughs> Reel her up a little bit there. I feel like a professional. There's something very odd about Mr. Marlowe put my finger on it. Had no idea it was fate come calling. Chucky! Bacardi Dark, sir. You got it. Uh, and uh, a daiquiri for me, please. Thank you. Hemingway's favorite. Well, my father used to carry a pocket watch. Very distinguished. Uh, yeah. Actually, this is quite a special one. Listen. Well, that's great. <laughs> Here you go, gentlemen. Thank oh, you. God bless you. Ah, nice. Well, here's to new friendships. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Uh, so tell me, have you always been a fishing guide, Mr. Russell? No. It's kind of a hobby. I'm working on a novel. Really? Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. Before that, I was an attorney. Oh, my. And you've given that up. So to speak. Do you realize that there are more people in law school right now than there are lawyers? Is that right? It's a fact. For every engineer they graduate from the university, they graduate 50 lawyers. $25 billion in liability suits last year. That's preposterous. <laughs> They're parasites. They're bloodsuckers. It's my opinion. Gee, Chris, I get the feeling you don't like lawyers. If it weren't for lawyers, dear boy, we wouldn't need lawyers. <laughs> you know he drank that. and talked for the rest of the evening. <laughs> Mr. Marlowe was a hoot. It was the most interesting night I'd spent with my clothes on in over a year. 
Good night, Chris. Good night. In the end, though, I was happy to get away from him. He was so rabid about lawyers, he left me with a queasiness in my gut, like a feeling of deja vu or mild food poisoning. Forget it. I'm not selling the townhouse. My father bought that house. Sell the rest of the stock. Book's coming along fine, Harry. Well, my next question is, how much am I paying you? The stock, right. There's an old saying, money talks. The only thing I ever heard it say was goodbye. I had to try to generate some income. I've been working on this damn book for over a year. Writing, my friends, is hard. Please, come in. Uh, Please. Thank you. I simply had to come by and talk with you. Yes. Oh. You mind if I sit down for a moment? Oh, of course. Thank come you. seat. <coughs> you okay? Oh, yes, I'm fine. It's just the heat. Could I have a glass of water or something? Sure, sure, Thank sure. You. <coughs> Our conversation yesterday was quite inspiring. I simply had to come by and talk with you. Well, thank you. I brought you something. Oh. Right there. Oh. Oh, oh that's better. That's a novel. My first. A novel? Yes. <laughs> yes, I only recently finished it. I'm such a coward, I haven't told a soul that I've written it. I was wondering if you could read it and give me your impression. Oh, I'm no expert. Oh, no. I, I think you'll understand this. It's about lawyers. I'll read it. Ah, thank you. Now, I want your honest opinion. Mm, you'll get it. Good. All right, then. That's <coughs> Thank you, sir. You know, you can rest a bit. You don't have to... Oh, no, I'm fine. But I tell you, I'll be at the pub later if you're so inclined. And uh, take your time with this. There's no rush. I want you to uh, digest it all. <laughs> okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Oh, let me get the door for you. Ah, you're okay. All right. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> hey, happy reading, my friend. A murder of crows. Inside the title page was a quote from William Shakespeare. First thing we do, let's kill all the lawyers. <laughs> the book was about lawyers, all right. Five of them. All highly paid defense attorneys working in major southern cities, all with very rich clients who were guilty. Very nasty bad guys who deserved to be put away. All acquitted. But instead of going after the bad guys, the killer decides that it's the lawyers who need to be punished. So he knocks them off one by one. Each murder was elaborately planned and perfectly executed to appear as a suicide, accident, or a botched robbery. The writing was a revelation, a masterpiece of suspense. In that title, I learned that a group of crows is called a murder, like a flock of seagulls, an exultation of doves, or a covey of quail. A murder of crows. Quite simply, the book was brilliant. <sighs> Shit. Chuck A! Hey, Marcy. Hey, you know that old guy I was drinking with last night? Yeah. Have you seen him? Yeah, he was in here earlier. He said he wasn't feeling well, and then he split. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 
Excuse me. Roger that. Excuse yes, me. Sir. Yes, yeah, is everything OK? Are you a boarder here? No, I'm just visiting a friend. What happened? Well, it appears an old man had a heart attack. It wasn't Mr. Marlowe, was it? Mr. Marlowe. Yes, it was. Is he OK? No, I'm afraid not. He's, he's died. I just, I just talked to him this afternoon. Yeah, I know. It's a shame, isn't it? Did you know him a long time? No, I just met him yesterday. I took him fishing. I understand he was new in town. Yeah, that's what he said. I mean, I don't know much. Uh, he used to be a teacher, and he teacher. moved here. He retired here. You know where he retired from? No, he didn't say. You know, the landlady said that he told her he didn't have any family. That's right. Right, right. Yes, his wife passed away recently. See, I've seen that happen a million times. First one spouse goes, and the other one doesn't last a year. Are there going to be any services? No, nah, they'll probably cremate him in the morning. You could light a candle at St. Andrews. OK. Thank you. Yeah. Excuse me. Excuse me. Detective? Uh-huh. Detective? Gerta. What are they going to do with his things? Well, he's got no will. And since he has no next of kin, his possessions will go to the state. Why, is there something we should know about? Nope. Nope, just wondering. OK. Night. Good night. submitted the manuscript to five houses. First call back was DeVry Publishing. I had an appointment with the owner of the company. Janine DeVry. Lots of Russell. <laughs> I thought they would like the book, but I had no idea I would get this kind of reception. I've never been treated with such deference, not even by clients who were in deep shit. You should never underestimate the power of art. I'll take it. I'll take it. New York Times Book Review. A brilliant indictment of the criminal justice system. Probably the season's best literary offering. Mr. Russell is a star of the first magnitude. Kill a few lawyers, you're bound to be popular. <laughs> you're on your way, Buster. Trust me, this is just the beginning. You're going to be a very rich man. Oh, it's just hard to believe all this. It's amazing. Maybe it would make a fortune before I even finished it. 
Yeah? How could you be so sure? Made me wet. Donnie, do I have any messages? have loved you. Oh, yes. Very much. He gave me everything I ever wanted. Lucky girl. There are 15 bedrooms. Just enough. The book hit the New York Times bestseller list at number six. Janine had already ordered a second and third printing. I ignored the fact that the book was condemned by the ACLU, the American Bar Association, and the Trial Lawyers Association. I was having way too much fun. And the name? Clifford. Two Fs. Du Bose. Du Bose? Yeah, D-U-B-O-S-E. Got it, got it. It's a great book, man. Thanks. I love it. All right. Best wishes. Nice. Poetic. Hey. Hi. What's the name? Uh, make it up to Jenny. Jenny. I really loved it. I can't wait to read the next one. Neither can I. Whenever you're ready, I want to talk to you about in advance. You make me rich, I make you rich. It's a perfect deal. Hello, Larson. Hope. What are you doing here? Well, you see, my friend wrote this book, and I thought I'd come by and get him to sign it for me. This is my publisher, Janine DeVry, Elizabeth Pope. Hi. Hi, nice Elizabeth to meet you. is an attorney. Excuse me. It's good to see you. You too. You look well. Thanks. Hope you enjoy it. I already did. You read it already? Uh huh. You hated it. <laughs> I thought it was dark. It is. I never thought of you writing anything like this. I mean, it seems somehow incongruous to me. Surprise you again. It's just that I didn't expect anything like this, that's all. But hey, congratulations. I'm very impressed. There you go. Okay. Good luck to you, Larson. Nice meeting you. Take care. Let's get together. By all means. It was like I could feel myself falling. 
losing touch with the one decent thing in my life was then that the magnitude of what I'd done came home to me. There would be no next book. I was a thief. Now there's a sight. A lawyer with his hands in his own pockets. Oh, I forgot. You're not a lawyer anymore. You're a big time writer now. What? Did I miss a little book signing? Damn. I went and bought my own copy and everything. <laughs> Thurman. I'll let you out of your cage. Oh. Didn't you hear? I'm a free man. I was acquitted. Isn't America great? Well, where else could a disbarred, self-righteous, piece of shit mouthpiece like you ride around in a Rolls Royce? Are you attacking me? Oh, no, no, wait, wait. You only attack women. Or is that when you try to have sex with them? <laughs> I forget, I don't know. Keep laughing, smart ass. You're gonna get yours. In spades. You know, Thurman, on the list of the most despicable human beings on this planet, you're at the bottom. It was a revelation representing you. Because it was then that I realized that I couldn't, couldn't sink any lower. That's sweet. Hello, pussycat. Is this your latest? <laughs> oh, affirmative action. Well, I'll leave you two alone. Good night. Ho, ho, ho! Oh, hey! Don't forget to whip it, huh? Do you know him? Hmm? Are you coming? No, thanks. I'll walk. Thanks. How you doing, Cliff? Worse. God damn it. DuBose. Yo. No, I just walked in the door this minute. Oh, Jamaica was beautiful, man. Yeah, as, as a matter of fact, I did buy some land down there. That's right, from when I retired. And since we're on the subject now, I quit. Casualties. It won't be long. We'll be moving to the island. Plenty of fresh fish every day. You're gonna love it. Doing here, Cliff? 
can sleep? Of course I can sleep. I can do any fucking thing I want. Finished programming. I was just. Shut the fuck up. Can you work these machines? Yeah. Sit down. Can you access files from the other police departments in the surrounding states? Yes, sir. Can you access those files as per victims' occupations? Uh, yes, sir. I, then I... type in their lawyer. Lawyer? That's right, lawyer. Start with Mississippi. Biloxi. M I S S I S S I P P I. All right, bring it on. Boss Russell. Who wants to know? I do. I'm the motherfucker you've been playing with. Hey! Hey! Right, get his left. What's going on? I'm going downtown. On what charge? Arrogance. Okay. Right this way. Watch your head. Uh, freedom is rights and uh, fasten the seatbelt. idea what was going on but when you're guilty you expect the worst ah uh, yes Billy Ray hello Lawson Guess you ought to met Detective DuBose. Yeah, I offered him a breath mint, but you know how he is. You want to tell me what's going on? No. But it's my job. It's about your book, Lawson. What about it? Well, it seems it's all true. What? It's all true. All five of the murders in your book really happened just as you described them, right down to the last detail. All of the victims were lawyers. All of the deaths were listed as accidents or suicides, except for the first one, which appeared to be a failed robbery attempt. And all of the murders are connected by a single motive. Each of the victims had just won a major legal victory for an unsavory client, just as you describe in your book. That's impossible. I mean, it's some kind of coincidence. Oh, I'm afraid it's not. See, we're not talking about similarities here, Lost. We are talking about exact details of each crime. Details that were never released to the press. I mean, minute details, man. Right down to the color of the carpet. We are talking about things only the victims or the killer could have known. So I need to ask you, Lawson, where did you get all of the information for your book? My legs went numb and I couldn't breathe. I'd been so careful. I destroyed the only evidence that could prove I didn't write the book. Now, of course, there's a distinct possibility that nobody told you any of the details of these murders. There's a distinct possibility that one disgusted, disgruntled, disbarred lawyer, angry at the system that shut him out, took revenge on the very men who refused to make the same moral sacrifice he did. Nobody had to tell you any of these details because you were there, Mr. Russell. You killed those men. You're out of your mind. Why'd 
you send me your book? What? Is that not your handwriting? You just couldn't stand the idea of people not knowing about your accomplishments, could you? I mean, what's the sense of committing the perfect crime if nobody knows about it? So you set it down detail for detail, didn't you? And you sent a copy to the one person you knew could understand it, the detective that worked the first case. You sent me that book, didn't you, counselor? Because you wanted me to catch you. Didn't you? I'd like to speak to an attorney. Hmm. Good luck finding one. Thanks for coming. What the hell is going on, Lawson? A really big misunderstanding. You are being investigated for five counts of homicide. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, some kind of mistake. No, there's no mistake. That's the list of victims. They died exactly how you described it in your book. I didn't kill anybody. I promise you that. Then you're going to have to explain to them where you got your information. Am I being charged? No, not yet. They want to hear your story first. I won't believe it. Try me then. What are my options? You don't have any. You have to cooperate. Tell them where you got your facts. Ugh. The law does not respect protection of sources in capital crimes. Hell, you should know that. It's obstruction of justice, yes, yes, yes. accessory after the fact, harboring a fugitive. Man, if they really want to get nasty, involuntary manslaughter, you go to jail, Lawson. Okay, okay, all right. Tell them that I need time to confer with counsel and prepare a statement. All right, tell them I'll be more than happy to cooperate in every way possible, including naming my source, but I need out of here now. Lawson. Pope, please, just do it. He's guilty. How can you tell? Watch, he'll look back. When the perps hold them, they always look back. The bow's here. Rabbit's on the track. I set the hounds loose. Billy Ray, old buddy. I need a search warrant. Oh, I know just the judge. Satisfied? I can't believe this. But it was true. Each one of the murders in the book documented an actual killing. I was, to use the vernacular, fucked. I didn't write the book. What? I didn't write the book. It was given to me by an old man I met in Key West. He gave me the original manuscript to read, and then he died of a heart attack. I got greedy, I put my name on it, I submitted it, and then... You expect me to believe that? No, no, hell, I don't even believe it, but it's true. Listen, you said yourself when you read it, it didn't sound anything like me. I'm guilty of plagiarism, not murder. So where's the original manuscript? I burned it. Great. So... The old man from Key West is a real killer. Is that what you're telling me? Yes. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe he just knew the killer. You don't believe me? I don't know what to believe. What are you doing? I don't think you should say any more to me. What are you talking about? This is privilege. No, it is not. I am not representing you in this. <sighs> I think you better seek other counsel. No, Pope, listen, Pope, listen, listen, listen. I'm sorry, Lawson. I need your help. 
There was a time when I would have done anything for you. But I don't know who you are anymore, Ross. I can't help you. I'm not sure anybody can. Sure must be proud. Very funny. Can I help you? Hey! What the hell's going on here? Maybe this will explain things, counsel. Now let me ask you, a fine legal mind like yourself, are you cooperating? Because if you're not, I'm cooperating. Excellent. Oh, boys, Mr. Russell's just given us permission to be particularly destructive. Carry on. Detective? Nah, never touch it. Makes me happy. You know, Russell, I, I kind of admire you. Yeah. I think it's a hell of an idea. Knocking off those scumbag lawyers. Letting all these guilty men go free to continue preying on society. Yes, sir, it's a damn fine idea. Goddamn shame it's illegal, though, isn't it? Oh, I enjoyed your book. A lot of creepy shit in there, man. I was particularly enamored with the analogy to crows. That's the right word, isn't it? Analogy? I mean, they're extremely intelligent, wary, omnivorous. They're also extremely protective of each other, a very successful species. You know, their numbers are exploding in this country, just like lawyers. <laughs> That'd be a metaphor, right? Or is it a simile? Whatever. You know, you barbecued me on the stand once. You remember that? Vaguely. You like being a smart ass, don't you? Must be a genetic trait with your profession, like overcharging. And y'all just love attacking the police. Makes your day. Bringing in those high priced so called experts. Earn 10 times as much as we do to tear apart our investigations and lab work. While we're underpaid, overworked, understaffed, and constantly being pushed into the ground as if we were the criminals. Some of you are. It takes a team effort to have the highest crime rate in the nation. Now you're being downright offensive. We both are. The difference is, I'm trying to be, but you just can't help it. Hmm. You know, I, uh, Followed that Parks trial. <clears throat> Our boy Thurman was guilty, wasn't he? How did that deal come down? I mean, why did you snap on him like that? Too many Twinkies. Oh, that sounded expensive. Lieutenant, you better look at this. Why, why? I found him in the kitchen, underneath the cabinets. Oh, well, looky here. Oh, that's a good one. 
No wonder you had all the details right. You took pictures. That's not mine. I've never seen that stuff before. No, really? Well, I guess uh, we just better let you go, huh? Wait, listen. I'm being Get afraid. Get your hands your back now. This is my favorite part of the job. Austin Russell, you're under arrest on five counts of murder. Oh, no. The goddamn rabbit's loose! Repeat, the rabbit's loose! New Orleans Police Department is actively seeking Lawson Russell in connection with the murders of five prominent attorneys depicted in his book, A Murder of Crows. <laughs> oh, how sad. Oh, ho, ho. Mr. Russell escaped custody earlier this afternoon is currently at large. Oh, come here, baby girl. It's time to play the escaped convict in the warden's wife. Mm. My. Mr. Free, did you have any idea that a murder of crows was based on real events? None whatsoever. I'm shocked. What is the publishing company's position on this? DeVry Publishing only wants to see justice served. I hope that the police apprehend this maniac quickly and that he is made to pay severely for these crimes. I was on. Brilliant. This book is going to go through the roof. My father loved the law. He saw in its pursuit the highest achievement of man, justice. And a little bit of justice, he used to say, is all we can hope for. Before I went off to college at Yale, he gave me three pieces of advice. Never waste the opportunity to tell someone you love them. Never take the credit or the blame for something you didn't do and always tell the truth. It's easier to remember. Thank God he was dead. Trying to find out what happened to the personal effects of the man who died here in Key West earlier this year. All right. What was his name? Uh, last name Marlowe. Christopher Marlowe. When did he die? March 3rd. I'm not showing any Marlowe, sir. Are you sure he died here? Positive. Well, we have no record of it. Gotta be in there somewhere. Well, if he died in Monroe County, a death certificate would be on file. Do you have an attending physician's name? Uh, no, I don't have a physician's name. I spoke to a detective at the Key West Police Department, Detective Goerta. Goerta? You mean like the German writer? You know, I don't think there is a Detective Goerta on the force, sir. Maybe you all have her on county. She was part right on the wrong planet. I had to retool my thinking. Everything I knew was wrong. Christopher Marlowe was the English writer who first interpreted the medieval legend of Faust, the man who sold his soul to the devil. Gerda, of course, was a German poet whose crowning work, Faust, was the most famous version of the tale. I've been tempted by the devil, all right, and sold my soul. Lock, stock, and barrel. Come one. He's here.
Hi. Are you Mrs. Evans? Yes. I'm Inspector Harris of the Department of Justice. May I come in? Am I in some kind of trouble? No, ma'am. I'm investigating a man who was a tenant in this rooming house in March of this year. A one Christopher Marlowe, wore glasses, walked with a cane, English accent. Sure, Mr. Marlowe, I remember him. What did he do? I'm not at liberty to say, ma'am. How long did he stay here? Just about a week. And he seemed like a nice enough man. Paid in cash. Did he leave a forwarding address? No. Did he meet with anyone while he was staying here? No, not that I know of. This subpoena, as you will see, requests the phone records of this rooming house while he stayed here. Oh, no, 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 no. He didn't use the phone here. And I thought that was odd. He always used the pay phone on the corner. The pay phone? Mm-hmm. Thank you, Mrs. Evans. You're welcome. The supervisor at Ma Bell was even more cooperative than Mrs. Evans. Sometimes life just works out that way. Suspect, he went over the fence at Calder Alley. I'm proceeding to Elizabeth. We lost him. Guys here. Fuck him. Well, you're gonna need to confer with him. What for, Billy Ray? So we do all the work and they get to give the press conference? I would have thought you wanted to do that. This is the one he poisoned. They exhumed the body this morning. I assume you heard about Key West. It's a bonehead move, if you ask me. I figured he'd be long gone by now, South America, maybe. No way. He's on his way back to the Big Easy. You think? I know it. Man's not finished. He's got another lawyer to get. Who? Himself. Why you think he sent me his book? I took a flight from Miami to Baton Rouge and caught a Greyhound down to the city. All the calls from the phone booth in Key West were local, except for one in the 504 area code, New Orleans, my hometown. 
phone was listed to a Miss Althea Delroy, 616 Jackson Street in the Garden District. Thurman Parks lived in the Garden District. Didn't think it was a coincidence. to see if Althea Delroy's number was in Thurman Park's book. It wasn't. The whole thing didn't add up. But from the sound of it, Thurman and Janine did. story of Adam and Eve. Adam exasperated with Eve, asked God why he made her so beautiful. So that you would love her, God replied. But why did you make her so stupid? And God said, so she would love you. Uh -oh. <laughs> they deserved each other. It's me. I can't talk to you. I could go to jail. I know. I need your help, Pope. The legal database report Elizabeth gave me said that Mrs. Althea Delroy was a widowed housekeeper. She had a 10-year-old daughter and lived in a two-bedroom condo on Jackson Street. She owed 59,000 bucks on it. What she had to do with all this was anybody's guess.
It's the single thought which the playwright tries to prove for his own work. Can anybody tell me what the theme of Macbeth is? Oh, uh, law. If you're greedy, it leads to disaster. Is it really greed, though? Macbeth is more than that. James. He's more ambitious. He's ambitious, isn't he? How ambitious? Ruthlessly, would you say? So Shakespeare set out to prove that ruthless ambition leads to its own destruction. I think he did that. I figured the professor would be tied up for at least an hour. It's time to see where the bodies were buried. never broken into anyone's house before. It must be a good way. I didn't know one. His name was Arthur Corvus. I saw all the photographs of his wife and daughter. They could be coming home any minute. The daughter's room was musty smelly. I figured she was away at boarding school. So he didn't know Thurman Parks III. But he was a professor of drama. He taught acting, theater history, playwriting. What was his connection to Marlowe? I spent too many years listening to bullshit to not know it when I see it. There had to be a connection.
Well, if it weren't for lawyers, dear boy, we wouldn't need lawyers. Night. Thanks. Ruthless ambition leads to its own destruction. Okay, Professor. Thanks. How you doing? walked right up. Who? Lawson Russell. Who? Lawson Russell, the author of that novel, uh, A Murder of Crows, the one who knocked off all those lawyers. You haven't read about this guy? Oh, yes, I've read about him. I just thought that you were mistaken. No, no, it was him, all right. I looked him right in his face. Well, what in the world would he want here? Well, that's what we want to know. I'm uh, Detective DuBose. New Orleans Police Department, homicide. How do you do? Tell you the truth, Professor, I'm as uh, confused as a nun on a honeymoon. <laughs> May I show you something yeah, over sure. here? Certainly. Apparently, <clears throat> he broke the window in the back door there, let himself in, and he was upstairs when the housekeeper came home. How strange. Yeah, ain't it? Well, you know, these uh, serial killers are totally unpredictable. You may just want to check around and see if anything's missing. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll make it a point to do that. Hey, hey Professor. Professor. Yeah. You never met Lawson Russell before? Uh, no, thank God. You know anybody who knows him? Uh, I don't think so. So I guess you never read his book, Murder Crows? No, sir. Well, huh. maybe he was just hiding out here for a while. Yes, quite possibly. Uh, Professor, your um, housekeeper, Mrs. Uh, Delroy, uh, she says you teach over at the university. Yes, I do. That wouldn't be law, would it? <clears throat> no, I teach theater. Acting? <laughs> yes, among other things. Is that your family? Agent man in FBI, who's in charge here? Detective DeBose. Ah, oh, Christ. Here they come, the thorns in my ass. Are you DuBose? No, I'm the fucking Easter Bunny. Nice suit, Ace. Aristotle said, all that we do is done with an eye towards something else. Simply put, to understand the deed, look to the motive. Jeffrey Lowell was the first of the five lawyers murdered. I reasoned that if there was any personal connection between the victims and the killer, it would be with the first murder, the messiest of the five, the most violent. I had to go back nearly three years before I found it. Jeffrey Lowell represented a banker from Baton Rouge charged with hit and run driving. A woman and her daughter were killed in the accident. The victim's names were Jean and Trudy Corvus. Lowell had the case thrown out of court on a technicality. The investigating officer failed to, as the court put it, properly advise the banker of his rights. The banker walked and a serial killer was born.
Not a good start for your career. Question everything. Just come on in here and stay for a spare, huh? Okay. Sit on down. But you're not gonna give me any of that courtroom arrogance? You're not gonna smile for me? Well, I gotta tell you, I'm impressed. You have given me quite a day, Mr. Russell. But then again, you've always been kind of unpredictable, haven't you? Like that evening in your study when you called Judge Banning, withdrew yourself from the Parks case. I tell you, you know, that threw me. That threw me. It impressed me so much that I decided not to kill you. So I was always on your hit list. But you see, I decided to test you the way God tested Job. The book. Yes, sir. I love the Faust thing, by the way. Very clever. Thank you. You know, it's quite a piece of work. I could see why you felt compelled to share it. Yes, it was a story that needed to be told. Sorry about your family, though. I'm sure that was hard. Oh, you have no idea how it felt watching that man go free after he killed them. You see, I could tell from his eyes that he was remorseful for what he'd done. But his lawyer, his lawyer smiled and patted him on the back. Something turned in me then. I felt a rage inside of me, and I swear to God, I tried to put it out of my mind. I tried to turn the other cheek. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. But I couldn't wait for it. You see, he wasn't practicing law. He was hiding behind it. He was using it as a hammer to protect the privilege in our society. See, he was like you, lost it. You weren't interested in justice. You just wanted to win, because it fed your pathetic little ego, and it fed your pocketbook for a little bit of money. You gave away your goddamn integrity. For a little bit of money, you frustrated justice. Well, I'm here to tell you for all the people that you destroyed, I want a little goddamn justice, and I want it right now! Stand up. Stand up. Come on. Move over there. Come on. That's a shame I'm gonna have to kill you for violating my home. You sold your soul to the devil, Mr. Lawson Russell. And the devil has come to collect.
gun down, Professor. Put it down. I will kill you. It's your carpet. Come on now, it's over. Put it down. Drop it. And step back. Come on, step back. Thanks. Yeah, don't mention it. Officer needs assistance. 1741 Coliseum. You may recall, Mr. Russell, that uh, this is the favorite part of my job. <laughs> It was then that I realized I was holding the gun that killed Dubose. My gun, my fingerprints, it was me the cops were looking for. My name was on the book. It's your word against mine, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. A teacher and a deacon in the church versus a lawyer. And the disbarred lawyer at that. <laughs> oh, man. You're in a world of trouble. I'd run if I were you. He was right. I was going down for this, and there was no doubt about it. Corvus was going to go free. I am not innocent. But you are guilty. <laughs> Here's what we're gonna do. Okay. All the publicity sent the book through the roof. The royalties made me a millionaire. Has the jury reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. Elizabeth found me one of the best criminal defense attorneys in the country. But, unfortunately, my old pal, Judge Banning, drew the case. The 
defendant will rise. The bailiff will read the verdict. Whatever the jury's decision, I was prepared to accept it. We, the jury, find the defendant, Foster Russell, not guilty. I'll say it again, it's an immutable fact of life. The strong will always tread on the weak. But every once in a while, we get a little bit of justice. That's all we can hope for. Yeah. 